and welcome to another live English class. I'm Christian and this is Kangaroo English. Um, before I start, I would like to say that if you're not connected with me on Instagram and Facebook, you definitely should be because my Instagram is lit. <laughs> and also, um, you should check out my podcast and man, lots of exciting new things happening at the moment. Um, also, if, if you want to help to sponsor free English education, then you can become my patron on Patreon. Um, I would really appreciate it. Uh, okay, that's it. Let's let's get down to let's get down to business. Um, lots of people in class already. Hello to Zied, Felipe, Jose, Sanket's here. Uh, Yushantha, Gabrielle, Christina, Danielle, Abdullah. Um, <laughs> uh, Vinicius. Venetius, uh, Pete is here from Aussie English. Um, hi, Pete. Uh, Elias, Sandro, uh, Ula, Grzeszk, Grzeszk. Damn, Fabrizio, Aline is here. Uh, Orkady, Orkady, Dolly, Dolly, Muskan, Gosha, uh, Far, Far, Farzana. Um, I miss you too, Aline. Uh, Margaret, uh, lots of lots of amazing people um, here. Um, it's great to have you in class. I wanted to start today by talking about some word games. Okay, so we're going to um, we're going to play some word games to to warm up our vocabulary. Okay, so. This this first this first game is quite quite good. Uh, I like this game. Okay, so this is how it works. Um. Uh, there are two words here on the board: jump and school. Now there is one adjective that we can add to this to make two new words. So, my question is, my question is, what is this mystery word that we can put here at the beginning to make two new words? Does anybody here know what that mystery word could be? Something jump and something school. Hmm. What is the mystery word? Anna Luisa. Good job. Muscan. Uh, Fabrizio as well. No, not for Fabrizio. Base. No, it could be base jump, yes, but base school, no. Very good. The correct answer is high. So, uh, high school, I think that everybody knows what high school is. The secondary school. Instituto in Spanish. Um, yeah, uh, the, next, the next level in education. And then high jump. What is high jump? High jump is a sport where you have a bar like this, and the person has to jump over the bar. Let me try and do a picture. Ah. See, they're jumping over the bar. Normally they jump backwards, they jump like this, right, over the, over the bar. And, you know, the English people are so creative, they said, hmm, what shall we call this sport? You have to jump and you have to jump really high. Let's, let's call it high jump. <laughs> oh, 
look, there's, there's another sport. You, you have to jump and you have to jump a really long distance. Let's, let's call it long jump. <laughs> skipping rope is no, skipping rope is not high jump because you only jump a little bit, right? a little bit. I'm actually, I'm actually a little bit addicted to skipping at the moment. I don't know why, but I, I love it. I love it. Okay. Um, okay, the next one, more difficult. What is the mystery word that can combine with dance and meal? Hmm. Something dance and something meal. Main, no. Super, no. Salsa, no. Break, no. But that's a good guess. Break dance exists. Break meal, break meal doesn't exist. Hot? <laughs> a hot, a hot dance? <laughs> like in, um, like in South America, you know, the, but no, no, not that. Style? No. Foot? No. Rare? No. Yeah, this, <laughs> sexy, a sexy meal. Hello, Alessia. Nice to have you in class. Uh, laugh. <laughs> Lap meal. <laughs> you, you guys are so funny. Oh my god. Um, well, no, no. The answer is square. Now, I think it's possible that a lot of you don't know what a square dance is or a square meal. So, let me explain. Square dancing was invented by white people, okay? Because we know that white people have no idea how to dance, okay? Black people, yes, black people have natural rhythm. White people are just like, like this. <laughs> that's it, that's, that's, that's it, okay? So square dancing is literally where you dance in a square. Okay, so you imagine a square on the floor, so you go square, <laughs> like this. See? I'm doing a square, right? <laughs> White people dancing, square dancing, okay? And square meal. A square meal means a meal that is complete. It has some, some meat and some potatoes, and some vegetables, and some... It's a complete square. It's not a little, small, pathetic meal. It's a strong meal with all of the components. A complete meal. So, for example, your, your doctor will tell you that you should eat three square meals a day. Ah, there we go. <laughs> uh. Next one. I think also maybe a little bit complicated. War and call. Which word can we use for war and also for call? Very nice. Incredible. So, wow. Haitham, Haitham Ghazi. Good work. Also, who else got this one? Uh, uh, Josema. Josema Toro. Josema the Bull. <laughs> Very nice. It is cold. Okay, so... I think that you know what the Cold War is. The Cold War is the very famous war between the United States and Russia. The Cold War. But who can tell me what is a cold call? 
could be a cold call or it could be a cold call. Who knows what it means when you call <laughs> Who knows what it means when you cold call a person? Who can describe cold calling? A sad call? No, it's not related to emotions. No. But that's a good guess. It's a good guess. No. Um, it's actually related <laughs> when you're when you're angry with your husband. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's that's a great a great um a great guess. Um okay, so you have to think about business, okay? So in business when when something is when something is really good, when you are going to make money, when you're going to do business, we say that it's hot. We say, man, this is a hot opportunity. It's a hot client. It's a hot, you know, it's on fire, right? It's really, wow, I'm making money and there's activity. It's hot. But cold is the opposite. Cold is when you have to call somebody, right? You have to, you don't know them. They probably don't want to buy anything from you. You have no information about the person. It's cold, dead, like a dead fish. <laughs> and you have to call and say, hello, my name's Christian from Kangaroo English. Would, would you like some English classes? And they go, Pfft. and then you call again and again and again, cold calling. Or maybe you... You go down the street. Hi, I'm Christian. Would you like some English classes? And then they slam the door. Okay, so cold calling is, yes, when there's no business potential. Okay. Yes, like I, I think the worst job in the world, well, not the worst job in the world, but a very difficult job is this, is cold calling people all day. Imagine, all day people, people getting angry, people hanging up on you, people rejecting you. If, if you do this, if this is your job, hats off. Hats off to you because that is, that's difficult, man. Wow. Okay. The next one. Hmm. Skinned and red line. Who knows what the word is? Not easy. Not easy, this one. Hot. <laughs> no, Mayella, not everything is hot. <laughs> um, no, Gennaro, not hot. Ooh, Karina Pritwani. Boom! She nailed it. Very good. It is thin. Very good, Karina. Thin. So, thin skinned. So, this is your skin, right? And you can see that I'm very well hydrated today. Look, my skin is very elastic. <laughs> I've been drinking a lot of water, okay? Thin skinned. But Thin-skinned means that your skin is very thin, but it's a metaphor, okay? It means that I am very emotionally sensitive, right? If you say to me, Christian, you are stupid. My skin is very thin. I, I feel the emotion. You know, my emotions are very... You know, there's, there's, no, there's no barrier between you and me, right? Uh, but 
The opposite is thick-skinned. If I'm thick-skinned, you can call me an idiot, you can tell me I'm stupid and ugly and, and fat and retarded and mwah. I don't care because my skin is thick. Everything bounces off. Okay? And thin red line. I need a long time to explain this, but you should definitely go and see the film, The Thin Red Line. Okay, we'll do one more, one more, okay? Uh, let's do, let's do, wow, ah, dog. Um, dog and chocolate. <laughs> Mayela? Mayela, where are you? It's, it's hot. <laughs> Come on, Mayela, now it's your turn to say it's hot. <laughs> yes, exactly. A hot dog and, and hot chocolate. <laughs> um, do you know why they call them hot dogs? Does anybody have any ideas why it's called a hot dog? Yes, I like hot dogs too. My favorite hot dog is hot dog with, um, oh my God, what are they called? Like crispy, crispy onions. It's like onions that are really crispy. And then pickle, okay, pickle, and then mustard and ketchup. That's, that's a hot dog. Um, Fabrizio Montaloni, because you have to cook the dog to make a hot dog. <laughs> because they use dog meat to make them. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, yes, basically, people thought that they were made of, of dog meat because they would sell them on the streets of New York and, you know, people thought that it was mystery meat. Maybe dog or cat or horse or pigeon. Who knows? <laughs> um, okay, so... I was... I was chatting to Pasquale last night. Um, now, Pasquale is the moderator of the Kangaroo English Facebook group. The best moderator in the world. He is, he's incredible. Um, he, he's the best. And I was chatting to him and he asked me to talk about something specific in, in this class. He asked me to talk about if it's possible to learn English without an English teacher. Now, I, I have a question for you. How many of you have an English teacher? So, so just say, I have a teacher or I don't have a teacher. I'm very curious to know. Now, I'm not talking about the internet. I'm talking about, you know, a physical teacher. Okay, so Rodrigo doesn't have one, or Myra, Rachel does, Gosha does. Okay. Uh, Gul, Alesha, Patricia, I don't, I don't. Okay, so maybe... Okay, so I think... I have one, I don't, I don't. Okay. Okay, so it seems to me like... 70 30 so maybe 70 percent of you don't have a teacher and 30 percent of you do have a teacher um so my next question is why if if you don't have a teacher why is it because of money or because it's not possible where you live to find a teacher or What's, what's the reason that you don't have a teacher? I'm, I'm curious to know. Okay, so Anderson says it's expensive, money, it's boring. 
money, okay. Time, time, okay. Expensive, yep. Um, because it's boring. Because it, Jeremy says, because I'm very clever. Karima says she learns from the internet. Um, Sandro just wants to learn by himself. Um, Sanket says it's difficult to find uh, uh, a, a native speaker. In my city, there's no teacher. Okay. Okay, because of YouTube. Okay. Okay, interesting. Now, one final question. How many of you think it's possible to learn English without a teacher? Like, I'm curious, like, how many of you feel like you need a teacher to learn English? Um, no. <laughs> Sorry. How many of you feel like you don't need a teacher to learn English? Yeah, okay, so... Everybody, basically. Um, yeah, um... Yeah, so I, I I totally I totally agree. I think um, you know it's not it's not even a question of opinion. I think that there's evidence from not just now but evidence from the history of humans that you know teaching anything, not just language, but teaching is not um, is not necessary to learn anything um i mean yes it it can help if you have a good teacher you can really you know you can learn faster and you can be more motivated and you can understand quicker but i mean look at look at you so many of you here have no teacher and you are incredible students um you understand me you have a good level of English. I think, wow, very inspirational. Very inspirational. And Resolver, you're right. Socrates didn't have a teacher. He was the teacher. <laughs> um, okay, so... Uh, I'm, I'm, I have another word game to play, but I would... Um, I would be, um, I'll, I'll take your questions. Does, does anybody have any questions for me? And I will answer them. Um, I will answer them for you if I can. Um, so yeah, tell me, tell me any, any questions or doubts you have. Um, yeah, so I'm, <clears throat> I'm from, yes, I am Australian but I haven't lived in Australia for a long time, since, since the year 2000. That's a long time. Um, so my accent is a little bit strange. <laughs> uh, uh, okay. Um, so Sandro was asking about um, a quote that he read about acorns <laughs> and oak trees. Uh, yeah, so we, we have an expression in English. We say, from a tiny acorn, a mighty oak tree will grow. So, the, um, something like this. Okay. I'm, I'm not a very good artist, okay, but, you know, so we say that from this tiny, from this tiny acorn will grow a big oak tree, okay, so it's acorn, acorn and oak. Now, you know, this is to say that from a very small thing, you can create something big, so, you know, a small idea can be a big business, or... You know, a small person can make a big change in the world. Now, Sandra says that he read that they called an acorn a nut. Hmm. Well, I mean, maybe an acorn is a type of nut? I'm not sure about the, you know, the, the biological 
classification of acorns and nuts. But honestly, I have never heard a person call an acorn a nut. But, so to me it sounds a little bit strange. But maybe in some parts of the world they call them nuts. Uh, in my experience, no. But at the moment, like right now, without, without Googling, I can't say that it's right or, or wrong. Um, okay. Oh, really? Really? Okay, so um, Georgina just told me that in, in America, they call them nuts. Because they are nuts. Uh, so there you go. So yeah, maybe in America, it's nuts. And so in, in American English, this would be correct to say, from a nut, you grow an oak tree. Uh, okay, so Gosha's asking about which is correct. Um, here. Okay, so, which is correct to say, I forgot or I have forgotten? Okay, so, they're both correct, okay? They're both correct, but they have different meanings, right? So, I forgot is past simple. You are using this to talk about a finished event in the past. And I have forgotten means that you forgot before now. But how do you decide which one is correct? Well, it depends how you want to express yourself, right? So, I forgot at a specific time. I forgot yesterday. Yeah, I forgot at three o'clock. You're, you're telling me that it's something like a an event that's it's in the past, it's gone. But here, I have forgotten. You are more relating, you're relating this to now. Because remember, this have basically the, the perfect tense, it means before now. So you are connecting this to now. So I feel that, I feel that link. It feels like something recent, like it happened today, it happened five minutes ago, it happened in relation to what we're talking about. This is the difference, it's a psychological difference. So it's not right or wrong, it's what you want to say, how you want to express yourself. I hope that answers your question. Okay, so Rachel wants to know, what does it mean to nail? Uh, good question. So, nail is a verb and a noun. Okay. It's a verb and a noun. And uh, a nail is a... a the noun, okay, the noun is a metal, a metal object um, that you can, you know, you hammer it into, into wood or steel, it's uh, a nail, okay. I think you know what this is in, in your language, a nail, right? So, this is the noun. The verb is the action, the action of doing this, right? Bang, bang, bang. I am nailing the nail, nailing the nail, okay? So, this is the literal, the literal meaning, but it's also a metaphor, right? When I, when I nail something, I, I hit it, I do the, the job, I perform the action correctly, I do it well. So, you could say, for example, I, I nailed it, which means that I'm trying to, I'm trying to do something, this is, 
this is my objective, this is what I want to do, and then I, I nailed it, yes, success, task complete, okay, so that's the metaphorical idea, so you can nail a job interview, you can nail making a cake, you can nail writing uh, a great email, you can nail an English exam, boom! And also you can nail people, but that's a different meaning. <laughs> okay, um, okay, so um, I'm Christian, my name is Christian, and my wife is called Georgina, but everybody calls her George. And so I remember when, when we first met, I said, yes, my, my, my partner's name is George. And they were like, ah, so you're, you're gay. <laughs> because, you know, in English, normally George is a male name. But no, she's, she's definitely a female. Are you, are you female, George? Yeah, she is. <laughs> uh, okay. Margaret Nathania wants me to help with, with writing because uh, soon she will take an exam. Okay. Um, okay. I'm going to give you some advice. It's not my advice. It's advice from a very, very famous American author. If you want to be a good writer, there's only one thing to do. Only one thing. You have to sit and bleed. That's right. Sit and bleed. You have to write and write and write until your fingers are bleeding. And that's it. You know, um, Ernest Hemingway was not born a great writer. You know, um... <laughs> um um, what's her name? Oh my God. Um, what's the name of the woman who wrote Harry Potter? J.K. Rowling, right? Her first books, terrible, you know, and maybe even Harry Potter, you could consider that some of them are not brilliant. Fine. But it's practice. Okay. Being a good writer is just practice and that's it. So I can't help you with your writing, okay? You need to help yourself by writing every day. And that's it, okay? And also, yes, find, find somebody to, to guide you, to, to correct your work. Find somebody who can help you to push yourself to maybe, hmm, you're not using past perfect. It will help to make your writing more interesting. You should use more past perfect. Or, you know, I feel like you're using too many short sentences. Use some conjunctions. Or, you know, I feel like I need more adjectives. You know, someone who can help to, to guide you, okay? Um, okay, so Bruno is in Sydney. Well, next time I'm in Sydney, Bruno, I will come and see you. Um, Karina wants to know if I could list some interactive activities for ESL students. Um, yes, Karina, I could. How, how old are the students? That's what I want to know. Um, how old are they? Homera wants to know how she can find a good teacher. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I think maybe it's like anything. Um, a good teacher is a question of perspective. Um, go and try. Try lots of different teachers. And one day you will find a teacher who you really like. Who helps you to understand things. And, you know, you have that connection. And that's, that's your good teacher, right? I think... Um, I think it's very subjective. Um, 
Okay, I don't understand your question, T-boys. My favorite temporal Dixies. What is that word? I don't know that word. <laughs> Gull wants to know why English is so difficult. Hmm. Um, it's not just English. Language is difficult. Um, it's, it's something you have to really commit to forever. Um, you know, and if you're, if it feels really difficult for you and it feels impossible, um, I think that's good. That's good because you're being honest, right? Like when, when somebody tries to sell you a course, learn English in 30 days and they tell you, ah, English is easy. You're going to fail because English is not easy. And you cannot learn a language in 30 days or 90 days or 16 hours or whatever crazy thing, okay? When you realize that it's really difficult and impossible and frustrating and that's good because now, you know, you can say, okay, here's Mount Everest. If I'm going to climb Mount Everest, I need to be prepared for the mental challenge every day working but enjoying the process okay enjoy the process yes it's difficult but difficult is good good for your mind good for your your relationships good for for your native language good for increment uh, no incrementing no good for increasing the amount of knowledge in the world um, okay, Eman, what is the use of rarely? Okay. Okay, I like this word. It's a great word. So, you can see because we have this, okay, this indicates that it's an adverb, okay? Which, which means that we use it to give extra information about a verb. Like, imagine you have a verb like eat. Now, you could say, I eat. Great, perfect sentence. I eat. But, maybe you want to tell me about how you eat. You want to give me more information about your eating. Use an adverb, right? Like rarely you could say, I always eat. I sometimes eat. I never eat. Or rarely. So rarely means on occasion. Not very often. With a small amount of frequency. Maybe... Um, a few times, a small amount of times, a small quantity, okay? This is rarely. So if you say, I rarely eat, maybe you eat once a week, twice a week. I, don't, I hope that you eat more than that, okay? Jeremy wants to know, do I want to punch a kangaroo? Part of me says yes. <laughs> Part of me says yes because, I mean, <laughs> no, 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 I'm joking. I would never want to punch a kangaroo. Um, I, I don't know <laughs> why anyone would punch a kangaroo. <laughs> um, but it would be a great story for the kids, right? You know, when you're like really old. I remember that back, back in 2010 when I punched a kangaroo in the face. <laughs> uh, oh, that's, that's good. Okay. Um, Fari wants to know how can I improve my vocabulary? Um, well, the, the scientific research tells us 
that the best way to improve your vocabulary is reading. Because reading is really great for finding, coming across, encountering new vocabulary. You know, you open a book and it's full of vocabulary. But it's very important that you read at the correct level. Don't read books that you don't understand, okay? Read books where you understand 80%, 90%. So that you, well, number one, so you enjoy it, okay? If you don't understand anything, you're not going to continue reading. So enjoy the book and also, um, you know, you need to have context, okay? You need to know more or less the story and if you see a word, you don't know what it means, you can get an idea of what maybe it does mean. We can, we can put this theory to the test. Look, let me show you. Okay, I have a book here. Uh, this is um, a Jack Reacher book. Okay. I love Jack Reacher books. Th these books, okay, I think there's like 20 of them. I love them because, well, this book, it looks big, right? But the, the, the language is very simple. I mean, I can, I can easily read this book in one day because it's very, you know, it's, you know, for... Pure entertainment. It's light reading, okay? Now, I'm going to choose a page, a random page, and, and look for, um, look for a, an adjective. Okay, an adjective. Okay, here we go. Um, uh, let's find a, an adjective. Um, um, okay. Um, Okay, so okay, so let me let me put a sentence on the board. Where's the sentence? Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, okay, there it is. Okay, so it's just a little test. Okay, so here's the sentence. He heard the squeak he heard the squeaks as he walked across the creaky plank floor. So, now there are, there are three words here, three words that maybe, maybe you don't know, but let's think about the, the context. Uh, I forgot, <laughs> I forgot a word, I'm an idiot. Creaky wooden floor, okay? Very important for context, okay? So, we know that the floor is wood, okay? We know it's wood. So, here he's, he's hearing something, right? So, what can this, this be a squeak? He's hearing a squeak on the wooden floor, right? <laughs> so, we know that this is some type of sound. It's onomatopoeia. Listen, squeak, 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 squeak. He's walking on the floor. Squeak, 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 squeak. Okay. And 
another more anim onomatopoeia. Creaky. Creak, 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 creak. It's, it's the sound, okay? The sound of walking on the floor. And this, a plank. A plank is the individual pieces of wood, okay? These. Here I've drawn one, two, three, four planks. Four planks of wood. Okay? Now, so this is how it works. The, the first time you see this sentence, you're reading, and you're like, okay, I don't know the word squeak, and I don't know creaky, and I don't know plank, but I understand that it's a sound. Or maybe this, I have no idea what it means, but you absorb the word, and then maybe in a different book, you see this word again. And then you see this word again, and then this word again. And over time, you create associations. You, you realize what the words mean. Children understand words, what they mean. They don't look in dictionaries. <laughs> you know, my, my, my son, Luca, he knows what it means uh, to creak. And he's never looked at a word in a dictionary because it's context, okay? Now, this is the best way to learn vocabulary, okay? Um, some of you were asking about these books, okay? So, the, 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 author, the author of the book is called, his name is Lee Child, okay? And he's written, well, I think there's a picture of all of the books here in the back. No, here. Okay, look. Look how many. Look how many books there are in this series. Killing floor. There's like, well, all of these books. Okay, so there's like, there's lots, a, a lot of books in this series, and uh, it's a story of this ex-military guy, and he travels around America. And he gets into trouble. <laughs> and, and, and really, the stories are completely unbelievable. I mean, nobody can travel around America and get involved in secret mystery crimes and, and, um, and uh, investigations and conspiracy. You know, it's not possible, but it's very, very entertaining and very light. Like, you can read one chapter and stop, and then the next day read another chapter, and then you don't lose any of the story. It's, for this it's great, right? Okay. Um, but, but yes, yeah, so vocabulary, look, vocabulary is, um, vocabulary, reading is one way to learn vocabulary, but also, you know, uh, you know, watching, watching films, listening to the radio, everything's good. Input, input is good. Uh, okay, squeeze, uh, okay. Um, yeah, and, and a lot of people are saying here that, you know, um, that <clears throat> um, you can get e-books. Yeah, look, you know, if, if you don't have the money to pay for books, there are lots of things you can read online for free. And I think you should take advantage of, of that. You know, you can find, you can find books online. Um, yeah. Okay, let's, let's have a look at some more questions here. Um, okay, uh, Sumant wants to know about the passive voice. Hmm. Okay, we have, we have time to talk about the passive voice. Um, someone here is saying that they're trying to read Dan Brown, but they can't. Yeah, um, I, I, I know it's difficult um, to read a book. It's, you have to start at your level and slowly work up. I made a class about this, about 
I made a video about how to find a book at your level. Uh, I'll put a link up here later to this class, okay? Um, so let, let's talk about passive voice. Passive voice, okay. Um, the passive voice is, is easy, okay, really, in English. It's very easy. Um, the question is why? Why do we use the passive voice? We, we use the passive voice when we don't want to talk about the subject. Now, it could be because we don't know the subject or because we don't want to say the subject, okay? For example, um, um, I... I ate seven pizzas. Now, <laughs> imagine if your, your friend asks you, So, Christian, what did you eat for dinner yesterday? You could say, Well, um, I ate seven pizzas. Okay, fine. You're very, you know, you're very proud of this. <laughs> you're, because, wow, it's an amazing achievement, right? Um, but maybe you feel embarrassed. You don't want to tell your friend who ate the pizzas, right? Maybe your friend comes over and says, um, Oh my God, is that seven pizza boxes? What, who, what, what happened here? And you say, well, and so you want to eliminate this, right? And use only this. So some of you here already made the passive. That's, that's great. So what we do is we, we take the object of the sentence and we move it to the beginning. Okay. So we say seven pizzas. And then we use the magic passive formula, which is, passive is to be and the participle. Passive is to be and participle. That's it. To be and participle. So, seven pizzas, to be, so we need to put to be and but it's, it's in the past, in the past, were, because we have to have the verb to be in the same verbal tense. So, past, 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 past. Seven pizzas were, and now, the verb in the participle. Eaten. Okay. We are changing the order. Of the of the words so that we can eliminate we can eliminate this seven pizzas were eaten okay now imagine if you go outside and your car your car has disappeared oh my god where is my car and then you say my car was stolen because you don't know who stole your car. You don't know who did the stealing. Okay? So you say, my car was stolen. But this is one reason, right? When you don't know the subject. But you can also use it psychologically, right? Imagine if you are the boss of the company and you have to fire somebody. You have to eliminate them from the company. You could say, I'm sorry, but I am firing you. Very direct. I'm firing you. I'm doing the firing. Or you could use the passive to, <laughs> to eliminate yourself from the problem. And we can say, I'm sorry, but... 
You are being fired. By who? Well, by me, but I'm not, I'm not saying that. You are being fired. <laughs> um, so th but this is, the, this is the formula, okay? To be and, and the verb and then we're swapping. Now, I, I've made a very long and detailed class about the passive. You should Google it. Kangaroo English passive. Or look at a class about the passive from, from another teacher. <laughs> um, uh, okay, well, listen guys, um, I have to go. I have a meeting in two minutes. <sighs> it's going to be one of those days, but I, um, I have my script here for my class. This is, this is going to be the class that I will upload tomorrow morning. It's about articles. How many of you have problems with using ah and an and the? Hmm? You know, maybe especially if you're Russian or if you're from Asia, you have problems with using ah and an and the correctly. So this, this, this will explain, I hope it will explain everything perfectly. Um, and also, okay, Pasquale asked me to make a class about, about my, what did I do before teaching? Basically about my life. But, you know, I'm not, I'm not sure if that's a very interesting subject, really. Um, let, let me know in the comments. Tell me if you would like to hear anything about my, my history in, in the world. Um, yeah, because obviously I, I want to make content that's interesting to, to you. Um, so yes, I have to go. Uh, it was an absolute pleasure. You guys are the best students in the world. Um, I'm Christian. This is Kangaroo English. I'll see you in class. Bye. <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> okay, okay.